Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to how geography in the US is weirder than you think. Now, I love these geography type videos because it's, you know, geography without like observing the areas around us and how they differ to other places. Life would be a bit boring, wouldn't it? You know, because then how would you know where places that don't look like where you live are and, you know, what kind of things to expect? And obviously the US, the, the place is massive. It's just so, so huge. Like the USA is pretty much a continent in size and learning about the different variations and how the landscapes differ. Like even within say a uh, hundred mile radius, you could get, you know, mountains here. You could get, you know, valleys there really really interesting stuff real life laws one of the best channels on youtube and i'm sure this video is going to be super fun to watch so let's do it this video is made possible by audible get a free audiobook of your choice from audible exclusively by going to audible.com slash real life lore in the description this is a map of the united states and hundreds of years of colonization and laws has made the country's geography pretty weird in more than just a few places today i'm going to show you a few maps that will change your perception of how you see this country and its place in the world first of all south america at first glance it seems like south america is directly south of north america and while that's kind of the case it's also not entirely accurate if we were to move south america up you'd find that nearly the entire continent is east of florida and that the westernmost edge would only be about 380 miles west of the Azores, which are a part of Portugal. Next up, if you had to guess right now which US- So then should it be called East America then, instead of South America? state is closest to Africa, which one would you say? If you didn't say Maine, you're wrong, but yeah, despite being in the Northeast and sharing a long border with Canada, if you draw a straight line across the ocean, you'll see that Maine is in fact the closest state geographically to Africa. Moving on next to Texas, there's a couple pretty weird things about this state. First of all, this town that nobody has ever heard of called Dalhart. This town is located 485 miles away from the Texan state capital of Austin, which means that Dalhart is actually closer to the state capitals of New Mexico, Oklahoma, Colorado, wow. Kansas, sounds... Nebraska, and Wyoming. Six other different states. That's crazy. Another way to understand- That's crazy, but that's just a, a testament to how huge Texas is. <laughs> And just how big Texas actually is, is by taking a look at the city of El Paso, located in the westernmost edge of the state. If you draw a line from here to the easternmost edge of Texas, and then move that line over to point to the west, you'll see that the line goes past wow. Los Angeles, meaning that LA is closer to El Paso than the other side of Texas is. But LA itself is in a deceiving geographic location of its own. You would think that since it's on the west coast, it would be further west than most other US cities. But yeah. That's not totally true either. Reno, Nevada is actually located further west than LA is, which you can see when a line is drawn from Reno southwards. And speaking of weird senses of latitude, here's some more examples that might mess with your head a little. Austin, Texas is roughly on the same latitude as Cairo, Egypt. New York City is roughly equal to Madrid in Spain. Minneapolis is close to Venice. Vancouver is almost equal to Paris. And Calgary in Canada is almost equal to London. The North American continent has much cooler temperatures on average than Europe does at higher latitudes like this, which is why this is a little confusing. But perhaps equally confusing is what happens when you look at a globe and flip it on its side. If you start at Mexico City and draw a straight line out in this direction, you'll be amazed to find how many other cities the line roughly matches up with. From Mexico City, the line also goes through Atlanta, Washington DC, New York City, Paris, and eventually Izmir in Turkey. The perception is weird because we usually think of the world in terms of a map and not yeah. in terms of its true spherical shape. The final geographic oddities in America that I'll be discussing in this video are located around the northernmost parts of the country. First up in this region is Detroit, where if you start in the downtown region and travel south, you'll end up pretty quickly in Canada. If you head east, you'll also end up in Canada. Canada. If you go north, you'll end up in Lake Huron, and then eventually, what? Canada again. It's easy to end up in Canada while in Detroit, but it's even easier while in Point Roberts, an exclave of the United States south of Vancouver. The yeah, I, like, it, there was a video that I watched where the, even though, like, on, on a map, it kind of looks like Canada and the US, the border's like a straight line, but there was a, a there's a town in, or a city in the US that to get from one point to another, you got to go through Canada to get back into that town. 
that place that you want to go <laughs> like why not just put that place in canada I'm, I'm trying to remember like what place that was specifically i'm going to try and find it yeah, it was really, really crazy. The only way to get from this part of America to the other part of America is by driving 25 miles through Canada, <laughs> using their very small airport or taking a boat across the bay. There's over 1,300 people that I live that here, and it. only one school that only provides education up to fourth grade. From fourth grade on, American children in the point have to take a 40-minute bus to ride to through Canada. Canada to the other side of the U.S. Wow. And finally, let's talk a little bit about Alaska. Alaska is pretty obviously the northernmost U.S. state, but it's also at the same time the westernmost and easternmost state because of the international dateline located here, which part of Alaska crosses over. The dateline causes another weird situation here, though, on the Diomede Islands, where it crosses between one island owned by Russia and another island Whoa. owned by the United States. The result is that despite only being just a couple miles away from one another, the Russian island is 21 hours ahead in time from the American what? island. This has led the islands to be nicknamed as Yesterday Island and Tomorrow Island. Huh. And during the winter, when the water around the islands freeze, it becomes theoretically possible to walk between America and Russia. While in reality, it may be illegal to walk between the two islands, something that isn't illegal at all is clicking the link in this video's description to get a free audiobook of your choice at <laughs> audible.com nice. slash real life lore. Yeah, that place in uh, in the US that kind of is kind of like super connected to Canada, really, that's probably my favorite thing on this list. Imagine having to go through another country to get to a place that's in your original, you know, town or, or city or state. Like that is just, I find that fascinating because here we've got nothing of the sort, even though we've got, you know, three countries that are, that are bordering us or neighboring us. Yeah, there's no place that I know of that you have to kind of jump over or go through the border and then come back. Really, really fascinating. Really enjoyed this video from Real Life Law. He's definitely one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.